Opulence by Charles Hoy Fort, Part 1, Chapter 9a. According to Professor Newton, for instance, the distance of the Sun is about 380 times the distance of the Moon, as determined by triangulation. But upon page 22, Popular Astronomy, Newton tells of another demonstration, with strikingly different results, as determined by triangulation. A split god. The god triangulation is not one undivided deity. The other method with strikingly different results is the method of Aristarchus. It cuts down the distance of the sun from 380 to 20 times the distance of the moon. When an observer upon this earth sees the moon half illuminated, the angle at the moon between observer and sun is a right angle. A third line between observer and sun completes a triangle. According to Aristarchus, the tilt of the third line includes an angle of 86 degrees, making the sun earth line 20 times longer than the moon earth line. In principle, says Newton, the method is quite correct and very ingenious, but it cannot be applied in practice. He says that Aristarchus measured wrong, that the angle between the moon earth line and the earth sun line is almost 90 degrees and not 86 degrees. Then he says that the method cannot be applied because no one can determine this angle that he said is of almost 90 degrees. He says is something that is so incongruous with the inflations of astronomers that they'd sizzle if their hypnotized readers could read and think at the same time. Newcomb says that the method of Aristarchus cannot be applied because no astronomer can determine when the moon is half illumined. We have had some experience. Does anybody who has been through what we've been through suppose that there is a professor killer in the world who would not declare that regonometrically and spectroscopically and micrometrically he had determined the exact moment and exasperating, or delightful, decimal of the moment of semi-illumination of the moon, were it not that, according to at least as good a mathematician as he, determination based upon that demonstration does show that the sun is only 20 times as far away as the moon. But suppose we agree that this simple thing cannot be done. Then instantly we think of some of the extravagant claims with which astronomers have stuffed supine credulities, crawling in their unsightly confusion that sickens for simplification. Is this offense to harmony? That astronomers can tell under which crusade, or its decimated moment, a shine left a star, but cannot tell when the shine reaches a line on the moon.